Excellent. It's Thursday, the 25th of June, 2020, and welcome to a webinar with Raquel Hibouro. Is that right, Raquel? <laughs> Mobile learning for remote learning. Um, right, I'm Helen Myers. I'm chair of the London branch and very, very happy to be hosting these webinars. It's Joe Dale, though, who has brought everything together, all of his friends, and it's great that he's with us to do that. Joe, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, yeah, so thanks ever so much, everyone, for coming along to the latest Tilt webinar. Really looking forward to hearing uh, Raquel talking about mobile learning. So uh, these webinars are uh, offered completely free of charge through the Association for Language Learning. Um, I, uh, I try my best to, to scout around the world to find um, interesting people to ask to present. Uh, and uh, Raquel, you're in for a treat tonight, uh, everybody, with what Raquel's going to share with us. And um, I've also... I'm uh, going to put in the chat right now, as I normally do, uh, some example sessions if you're interested in uh, inviting me to do a paid webinar uh, for your department or for your school. I've just put that in the chat as well. But as I said, this is completely free um, for everyone to, to enjoy. And that's exactly what we would like you to do. Yeah, Over to you, we are really, really grateful to the presenters who give their time in this way. Thank you ever so much. Um, we also always mention Heike Philp, who helped us in setting things up, and also mm -hmm. Linguiscope, who have supported this series of webinars. Um, as a member of the Association for Language Learning, I always ask at this point, are you a member? If you are, please write in the check chat. It's been lovely to see people who've joined. I can see Mart who's there. There's people who've joined while we've been doing this series. So if you could write that you're in and then encourage other people to join, that would be great. And if you're not a member today, if you um, apply, you'd get, and actually up until the 30th of September, um, if you use webinar 10 as a code, you can get 10% discount on your membership. So that'd be great and lovely to see people saying yes and we love it yes we're members lovely um all of these webinars are stored on the AWR london site and that's where i'll put a link to joe's um uh, recording but also any other chat all of the chat will be available in any other links that we're given and a class photo at the end as well coming soon um on monday we've got charlotte ryland and katrina barnes this is not a tech thing particularly. They're going to be talking about creative translation in the classroom, but I'm sure it's something we could apply to tech. And we've already discussed it. We're going to try breakout rooms again. So give you little challenges to do with translation. And so, in fact, we will be using the tech to do that. Um, and then do you want to run through the others, Joe? Yes, no problem. So on the 30th of June, we've got Rachel Smith or Langslas Rach on Twitter who's going to be talking um, all about um, Apple specific apps as opposed to just um, use of iPads, but actual um, Apple apps like uh, Numbers and Keynote and, and Pages and, and tools like that, um, and her approach to um, remote teaching during lockdown. So that's going to be absolutely fascinating. We've not seen Rachel before. She's amazing. Uh, we've then got Florence Lyons coming all the way from New Zealand. Um, and she's going to be, but, but we're going to stick the same to the same time. It's going to be eight o'clock um, to nine o'clock for us in the UK, but for her, it'd be seven o'clock in the morning. So she's going to be talking to us from the future. It's going to be very exciting. Um, and she's <laughs> going to be, in fact, um, uh, she's going to be uh, referring to some of the things which um, Raquel will be talking about today as well. So she's focusing on Google Docs, but she's done some PhD research um, uh, for, um, for her doctor all about feedback, looking at written feedback and audio feedback and the power of that. So it's going to be quite sort of research led with some practical examples as well. Um, and uh, it's going to be absolutely fascinating. So she's going to be, uh, based on her, her um, uh, three, four years of study on, uh, uh, for her PhD, she's going to condense that down into an hour talking about feedback with Google Docs. So that's going to be absolutely fascinating, uh, I suggest. And then on the, the fourth, two days later, we've got Paul Rain, who's going to be coming in from Japan, zooming in to, uh, uh, to, to talk to us. Um, that one's going to be in the morning. So he's going to be He's going to be talking to us um, again uh, ahead, but around seven o'clock in the uh, in the evening. So it'll be ten o'clock a.m. for us till eleven o'clock. And, and he's developed. One. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, and he's developed a new uh, tool called EFL uh, Digital, which uh, is a very exciting platform. I think I've had a, a good look at it myself, and uh, there is lots of things you can do for free with it. There are some premium features as well. And based on my discussion with him, um, we connected with each other via via Twitter, as you do. Uh, he's going to try and make it more MFL specific. So he's particularly looking at advice and feedback from uh, attendees on how he could best meet um, MFL teachers' needs uh, as opposed to just EFL teachers' needs. And he's a, he's a university lecturer in Japan. And um, I ha I've had a very long Zoom chat with him uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he's a very nice chap as well. So he'll also be amazing uh, to see. And then on July the 11th, uh, Helen, do you want to tell us about yeah, the AWL Summer Social? 
Yes, this is our new idea. It's just some of us felt at the end of these webinars, sometimes we just want to hang out together and share music or, um, and I know Karine in particular, we wanted to do that. So we're just going to give it a go, eight o'clock. It might be just two of us there, I don't know, but anybody <laughs> wants to come along and just share some ideas in a, in a relaxed way, really. So that's then. Okay. So we've already mentioned about the etiquette. So now over to you, Joe, to introduce. Raquel. I think you've got Chris Hart there, Helen, as the title. Sorry. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's not the end of the world. But uh, uh, anyway, that's all good. Right. So it is my absolute pleasure <laughs> <laughs> to introduce uh, Raquel uh, Ribeiro, who I've known personally for quite a few years now. Uh, through the IATEFL conference. Um, so that for those people that, that don't know what the IATEFL conference is, it's a, it's, a world, uh, well, it's a worldwide audience that will then come to a, a place in the UK in different places. Uh, it's been to places like Manchester and Birmingham and, and Glasgow and, and Brighton and, and all over. And there's normally about two and a half thousand people that go to it. And it's a truly international uh, event. And so uh, I love going to it um, because you get to meet a whole range of people and uh, Raquel, who's from Brazil, who she's going to talk about uh, that in a moment. She's zooming to us from Brazil. She's not in the UK. She's from, you know, she's uh, 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 zooming to us from the past. Uh, four hours. Uh, yeah, four, <laughs> sorry, it's four o'clock. That's right. In, uh, yeah, in Brazil. <laughs> and uh, it's been my absolute pleasure to, to, to meet, uh, to, to get to know Raquel over the years. Uh, and um, I, I know you're going to really enjoy this session on mobile learning. So uh, Raquel, as, as myself as well, we're part of the Learning Technology Special Interest Group, or LTSIG, as part of IATEFL. And uh, we love talking about um, techie things and uh, but focusing on the pedagogy, of course. And um, I'm going to hand over to you, Raquel, but thank you ever so much to agree, uh, uh, to, uh, for agreeing to do this. I think um, we're going to get a lot out of this. And there's going to be some interactive elements as well. So if you have your devices with you, um, or you can use your, your web browser, then uh, you'll be able to join in the fun. So over to you, uh, Raquel, to get us uh, kicked off. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, Helen. Hello, everyone. So I'm Raquel Ribeiro. I'm speaking from very far away. I'm speaking from Sao Paulo in the southeast of Brazil right now. Speaking from the past, as Joey said. <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting, the notion of time traveling. <laughs> and uh, today I'm here to share with you the experience of using the possibilities, resources and creativity of mobile learning for remote learning. That's the current situation we've been going through, okay? Uh, feel free to use the chat, I'll try to keep up, but I think we can also uh, take a look at that later. And I needed to also be open to have this mobile learning experience, pretending actually that we are going through the situation as teacher and students. Well, somehow we have all been there. And I'm going to get started by telling you that when we think of remote learning in places where there is a huge internet connectivity, instability and issues going on very often, not to mention the personal difficulties of our students who haven't got access to computer or even to a Wi-Fi, they need to use um, the phone, internet data, so there are many other barriers apart from being far away from each other. So it's key to establish a practical, easy to access communication at first. And I use a few tools and this, these tools are the ones that go ongoing along the process. I would like, of course, I'll be starting with Google Docs. Uh, Google Docs is simple and the, the whole concept of Google Docs is that it is a piece of paper, a digital piece of paper. This is like the most famous tool for teaching in every country. I need you to join me in this journey. I'll be sharing with you a document. It's an ongoing communication space. So as you type this in your browser, you're going to realize it will direct you here. And I would like to ask you, uh, of course, if you can do that on a mobile, you can have what students have in terms of experience, but it works, of course, very well in a computer too. 
and as you keep refreshing the document, new things are coming up. For example, uh, one of the most important things that I mentioned here is the communication. So right now, thank you, Joe, for typing that. It's, it's really helpful so I can shift to the other screen. So the idea of ongoing communication is really important because in case the internet connection fails and we have to communicate, we've got this possibility there. So this is the first thing we need to do in remote learning. Considering the context I teach, groups of students, we have around 20 students per class, and we're talking about right now with these resources for teenagers and mostly adults. So I've just shared with you, it's something that you've got, but if you consider teaching remotely, this is really useful. So establish the communication first. This channel, the document needs to be uh, accessible for your learners and what to do in case connection fails. So this is our very first step. Then I'm going to travel through these tools and show you concrete examples of what I have been doing. Google Docs is very popular and simple. Just reminding you here of the sharing settings. The layout of the sharing settings has changed a little bit, but the principle is the same. And as you, you, you share this document with your audience, you need to decide whether they just view the document or if they are actually going to take part in using that. For instance, right now, this document I shared with you, I want you just to be able to visualize as I add the resources there. It's useful to use a table so that students know exactly where they have to go. I'm going to share with you a short video of my students working on mobile. Of course, this was recorded before the pandemic, but it happens pretty much the same as we go along and we think of them working at home, okay? Where is it? <laughs> So this is how they go along, typing this tiny spaces and contributing. And the teacher gets to see the bigger picture. So when I was back in class, I could actually follow from my computer. And this can also happen during the remote teaching. And we have all the contributions from our students. Color coding is very helpful as well. So this is one example of what can be done. There's something very interesting because it's just a digital piece of paper, but we can encourage communication. So now I'm going to share with you in your digital document, our ongoing communication. Remember, I've just shared another link. As you refresh, if you are in a mobile environment, it's easier. So let me use using mine here. Let me show you by using mine. As you refresh, then you get to see everything. Of course, there might be a delay because it depends on the connection. And I invite you to click on the second link, which is an infographic. Sometimes it gets you to direct and then you follow just the link once more. This is an infographic that can be e easily visualized on the mobile screen. And there are questions on a very, very important topic, which is interview questions, interviewing. We've been interviewing for questions <laughs> for jobs via Zoom as well, which is also something our students need to learn about. So they can use the questions here in different ways. 
So can, they can, for example, record their voices or they can type, and there are many other possibilities. If it happens that you have the video conferencing possibility, it's also very easy to navigate through it. It's so useful if we consider this scenario, and I'm sharing then another one, not only infographics, but also the current news. Uh, everything we've been doing so far yeah, involves how it has been during the pandemic. And uh, I think it's really important that apart from delivering the lesson, that somehow we find a way to involve students into what's going on because they have a huge need to learn vocabulary, to learn how to express what's going on. And I'm sharing a next link for you. This is for further reference with more examples of using infographics. So this is something for us teachers. I'm going to take turns into communicating in our ongoing digital paper uh, things for teachers and also from the student's perspective. And then if we think of current news, for example, that's our next share. Two days before the pandemic, that's when I gave my last class. And uh, that was very emotional because at that very moment, on the 11th of March, we were having this status of being a pandemic. So in the digital document, you're going to realize, let me see here, we teachers navigate through endless screens. And then I shared here with you a piece of news. That was the very moment when we got to understand that things had changed and the situation was way more critical than we thought. So this is also part of teaching and part of a class. The next tool that I'm going to show you has to do with their communication in Google Classroom. So let me just find it here. As we have a community of students in Google Classroom, we got to exchange ideas about what we learned. And this is so important because maybe you say, Raquel, but if you have Google Classroom, so why start using Google Docs? Because I also speak to teacher colleagues from Brazil, from the state schools of Brazil, who have very, very limited resources. And then Google Classroom is not something available for everybody, but now, of course, it's getting ever more. Edmodo is also another possibility to consider. So the whole point of using news and real links, authentic links, is to give students the opportunity to get to learn expressions and new words and also to voice what they consider to be more important. Like for example, this piece of news I've just shared with you, I decided to work on that by observing the language patterns, the, the verb tenses patterns and having students contribute on what they were learning. And every time we do that, it is important. It's a simple thing to do, but it is important to share. So as a teacher, I have also been blogging and sharing details of the step-by-step. -step. And I really encourage all of you who are following here. Many times we teachers think, oh, but this is so simple. But this is so simple. Maybe it's simple. And we do need something straightforward and something easy to use 
especially considering the restrictions and the difficulties we've got. And talking about difficulties, one of the most common difficulties we've got has to do with connectivity issues. So uh, uh, let me tell you a story before. Uh, in the very beginning, in April, when we started using Zoom to teach online, we were all so tense. All the teachers in my school, we were very, very worried. Would it work? Um, would our students be able to, observe, to actually watch the class and access the links? Would we be able to use the available resources? There were many doubts. And of course, the major doubt had to do with the connectivity. And one day, it, we had problems in the very beginning. And I believe, I don't know if it's the same in Europe, but here in Brazil, WhatsApp is very popular. And we go to WhatsApp groups to you know, keep up and to share information as a group of teachers. And it was like 20 minutes before classes started and messages were just coming up. Oh, I have no internet connection, no Wi-Fi here, what do I do? And of course we know, all right, you don't have uh, the internet access as a teacher, chances are your students won't have that as well. But anyways, you know what it is like being a teacher. We like to go out of our way to make sure we did everything possible. And I just remember this possibility to use the phone, this tethering possibility, this mobile hotspot possibility. So what I did, I made a step-by-step. -step. Uh, in the real day, I took just like a sequence of photos to teach, which goes like this. Oops. Which goes like this. Let's see if it happens here. Okay. Are you supposed to be showing your screen, Raquel? We can't see your screen. Is that the idea? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was sharing the screen. Sorry. Don't worry. That's okay. Don't worry. Thanks, You're doing thanks Joe. That's Thank okay. you, Joe. Let me do that. Sorry, I thought I was sharing the screen. So many. <laughs> Thank you for the heads up. No problem. Also, another feature of remote teaching. <laughs> <laughs> we go here. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You connect your phone to mobile data. Next thing, enable mobile hotspot. Then, in your laptop or computer, look for an icon of connection. There are many ones, and then you find your phone. That's my phone. I'll connect. But it's necessary a password. And then, in my mobile phone, I have to tap here so that I connect with the password given. This is the password given, so you click Show Password to see it, and type that here so that then you allow and it is connected so this can be really and uh, this is simple but at the same day many friends message, Raquel, it helped me. At least I got to start the class and luckily we had the internet connection back. So I recorded uh, this video, another video to share so other teachers can get to understand what to do. And this is so important. I'm going to share with you another link so for future reference when we think of connectivity and issues. Let me share this with you. So when it happens that we are having an unstable internet connection, this is one possibility. It's not the only one, right? There are all the things that come to play. For instance, the student's collaboration. We're getting there in a minute. 
So I talked a little bit about using Google Docs, one possibility of texting, considering the very beginning of the pandemic context, also Google Classroom, and very important things to consider. First, we establish and build this communication and engage students so they feel that they can cope with that, collaborating along, and not only to share endless files that are not going to be read or maybe are going to be forgotten. So this is the first idea. I also mentioned Edmodo because depending on where you are, that's very useful. There's another possibility if we consider that video conferencing is still not steady or not accessible for everyone. It is the app Voice Recorder, it's built in. I've been using a voice recorder uh, looking back since 2012. So if we think of countries and cities where internet connection and also having this possibility of changing and mobile models, then this is important. How do I use the voice recorder? First, uh, this video has no sound. I'm just going to show it. You have the app, then you open it, click on the red so you record, then you give it a title and share. I recommend you share that either by uploading on Google Drive, and then you can share the file with your students in the easiest way possible, or maybe sending that via email. Yes, email. Because if you communicate with parents, that's one of the things that work best. Here are some examples. Uh, in the very beginning of the pandemic, everybody was so worried about a number of reasons. Our safety at first, our families, and how to go on during the social isolation. And then the first contact was to say, look, we are here, it's going to be okay, and to prepare the learners for this transition. Uh, you see a first message where I recorded and shared with my students via Google Classroom because that's our channel of communication. The other one shows a message in Portuguese because I designed the message to the parents of students of the younger learners and I explained what they had to do and then I shared with them a recording with my very own voice. <laughs> yeah, we do that so that the children could follow along. Let me show you a little bit of that. It's for, uh, let me go again. It's for uh, the young learners. It's called a picture dictation. Oh, it seems it's not working, but let me get it here. I have another one, okay? Let me use this one. Hello. Lembra daqueles cards que a gente recortou na página 85 do student book? These I'm still talking to the parents, so it's in the native language. Certo? Repetem com a t falar em inglês. Five kites. Five crayons. And we go on and on, right? So it's very simple communication, but it helps. Uh, you know, students, the very, very young learners, are not supposed to, to be involved in our adult worries. Parents are overwhelmed with so much to do. So what I have learned is that the more direct the communication is, then the better it is and the more effective. It is so important to guarantee that our students, our learners have this sense of progress, the sense of learning, and navigating through the difficulties. Yeah? So this is a very simple idea. And don't worry, I'll be sharing all this presentation with you by the end in our ongoing communication, okay? 
then there comes WhatsApp. And then I don't know how it goes in your countries, but here in Brazil, uh, we think of WhatsApp as many times as very private layer of communication. I myself think of that this way because there are so many social medias I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and this is okay because that's how the social media was designed. And the WhatsApp is like your private messaging. And of course, we, we are part of a group here and there, but it's like, okay, WhatsApp is like our last resource. But in an emergency, it had to be considered. And I learned some things about using WhatsApp. Uh, depending on the country, maybe there's another messenger app. So I think this, is, this can be differently if we consider the possibilities in the different continents. One thing we can do, which is very simple, and again, I, I also help my colleagues from state schools who teach English, not as a, like as a foreign language in a language school, but as a subject. And I was asked, okay, so how can we use WhatsApp with the learners? Because WhatsApp demands less of a connection, of the internet connection, which means it can reach out distant places when this, where this can be an issue. So we can have, of course, simple conversations. Right, use emojis, which is also a language for communication. And I came up with some rules here, which are important, like establish some possibilities in terms of timing. You are not 24 seven available and that's not how it works. Uh, WhatsApp gives us the possibility of using uh, the synchronous or asynchronous, in a, in a synchronous or asynchronous way. There can be moments for written interaction and for voice interaction, of course. And if you teach uh, a big group, maybe you can have four people video conferencing, or if you teach private classes. And I, like in the beginning of the pandemic, I thought that was it about WhatsApp. That's all there was to learn. But then again, emergency and difficulties teach us so many other things. And another thing I learned is that WhatsApp can be an ally to help us when students have, are struggling with internet issues and cannot actually get to access Zoom in any ways. And I hope this is a distant reality for you, but it's really sad to get to find a student say, teacher, I'm here, but my phone won't keep it up. And they leave the room because there's, it, it just doesn't work. And then we have to find a way around the difficulties. And then when I thought it was over for WhatsApp, it comes as a great ally. And how is that? We can use WhatsApp. And here I have a photo of one of my groups, uh, adult learners <laughs> having classes on a Saturday. And one of the students, this one here, just couldn't watch the class. And the colleague had this possibility, said, okay, do you have her WhatsApp number? Do you think you could help her out? And my idea at first, is that she would hold the phone so the colleague would listen to the class. And you know what happens when we are really willing to learn? We always find a way. Then she said, no teacher, I think I'm going to see if it's possible to video call her. And it was. She held the colleague throughout the class like this. As I was teaching and they went to breakout rooms, that was such a powerful lesson to me. Our students are willing to cooperate with each other, you know, and they felt she was so happy she could take part. And the other student who was helping her out was so pleased, like, look, I'm helping my colleague, my friend, and she's watching the class with us. And then, of course, I learned another powerful lesson. And the following class, 
her internet connection was better and she was able to access via Zoom, which is our platform for classes. But that was so precious. That was really, really so precious because, you know, we see that we can make things happen even though there are some difficulties. I'm trying to catch up with the chat here because sometimes if there is some sort of question. And just yesterday, I was in this very spot teaching a group of teenagers and one student just couldn't access. And happened, nobody had her number. So I said, okay, I have your number from the registers and that's what I did. So I got this mini tripod and she followed the class with us here. And I was, hi, and she took part, correction, exercises, opinions, and the friends were asking her questions and she could reply. And in the end of the class, she said, you see, teacher, it's always possible. And, you know, this happens more frequently than we think. I'd like to show you another possibility here that also uh, enables our learners to have more independence in their learning, which is the use of a digital dictionary. And this is super important because they need to check words and when we teach groups of students, we feel like monitoring them along the way. But then monitoring is good, but the real thing is we need to give them the tools so that they can walk on their own. And let me show you how it goes, okay? Let me get the video. This, of course, was recorded before the pandemic. But it goes on during the pandemic just the same. Anxiety. So what happens is they understand, okay, this is how Anxiety. I can check words. This is how I'm going to decide whether I use, for instance, um, a British pronunciation or American, Better. and I'm going to check what it means. There are many good dictionaries. This is just one of the possibilities to consider. And it's so helpful. So I'm sharing here with you the link as well. <laughs> and maybe you ask me, but Hakea, why are you doing this at the same time, because I really like to walk my talk and, and this dynamic is very possible to happen in real class, even though you are teaching so many students. And then before the pandemic, I wrote an article, which I'm going to share with you shortly, about the use of artificial intelligence possibilities that are available and that we can integrate to our teaching being one of them, the usage of Google Assistant or this speech recognition voice command. So just very quickly, I'm going to play a scene just so you recap the idea, okay? Sorry, I just need to go back here. I'd like this to be. Hey Google, good morning. Good morning, Rachel. Hey Google, where is the first appointment? How do I get there? You can see the full directions on your phone. Very well. So this is the idea. Uh, of course, we have to help our students understand that it's important to add English, in my case, where we have Portuguese as our first language, add English as a second language in the settings of the phone. So it's easy to do that and we help them this way. Uh, then I thought, okay, this happened before. Can I use this during the classes, the remote teaching classes? You think it's going to be possible? And then I said, okay, let's give it a try. And I challenged one of the groups 
to use. We were studying about the weather and I said, okay, let's see what's the weather like around the world because, you know, we are going through winter has just started in the southern hemisphere and they had learned some words related to the weather and how to say the degrees. <laughs> and so each one of them had to ask the phone uh, something that would go like this. Hey, Google, what's the weather like in Montreal today? And then, of course, I have no volume here. <laughs> Let's go again. Hey, Google, what's the weather like in Montreal today? It'll be partly cloudy with a high of 23 and a low of 17. And then they got the keywords like cloudy and the, the temperature, and then they had to develop these. In Google Classroom. And it involves getting to understand what's spoken, maybe having to play it again and one more time. I'm trying to follow here in the comments. And it worked. And we are teaching remotely and we don't have to reinvent everything about teaching with technology. So we got super excited and there was a meeting afterwards and the parents were close to the students because that's another cool thing about teaching online. There's a meeting in 10 minutes and the parents can join you if you're talking about teenagers. And then uh, the father said, did you do that? And the child, uh, the, the teenager answered, yes, I had to look for the weather in Cape Town. And the father was just like that. And of course, this happens with the adult learners too. Uh, let me show you another video where a group of adult learners had to research by using voice recognition. What's the meaning of personal branding? Personal branding is the practice of marketing people and their careers as brands. And for instance, they were studying about personal branding and then uh, as Google reads, it's also a listening exercise and it helps a lot students with difficulties. So I really recommend, obviously for us teachers, ask straight to the point questions in order to obtain a voice response. Consider the fact that maybe it doesn't work the first time, but then you go on and we all learn from the process. See, direct questions such as, which are, which is, what's the meaning of, really helpful to guide us through that. And then uh, talking about this idea of voice recognition, this is also possible, this is also a possibility in Google Docs. I think you are familiar with the, the icon when you click in tools, there's voice typing. This was actually my first contact with artificial intelligence uh, possibility uh, and voice recognition. So I'm going to invite you to play a game with me. I'm going to share this document, voice typing around the world with you. And I think we are based right now in different places, okay? So the idea is the following. When you access a document like this on mobile, so let me show you in mine. But of course, it can also be accessed via the computer. So this is what it looks like. And then what you have to do, you will have the, the possibility to edit because I want you to, to contribute. So it's important that you press this blue pen you can see right here. Place the marquee in one of the lines. And then in your phone, there is an icon with a microphone. I can't get to show you, but it's here. And as you press this, you're going to speak something such as I'm going to say, 
Hi, I'm from Brazil. And I would like to see uh, the cities and countries we've got, okay? So let's play this game. I'd like you to react, to use a reaction and say if you are on board <laughs> to play. Raquel, that's amazing. Could you just show people how to yeah. um, do multilingual voice typing? Is that okay? Could you just sure. Show, you do an example so show me with reactions if you are on board. And meanwhile, let me show you something else, okay? And then I'll promise I'll share this. So uh, when you actually click in tools and voice typing, then you are able to choose the language here, right? And of course, in your phone, you need to have your phone enabled to do that. Ah, we've been going through lots of updating. So I'm still there in the document. And now it's going to be voice typing. And it's a voice typing from around the world. Okay. <laughs> Let me just change this because it's looking horrible. And okay, I think it's it's fine. So I'd like to invite you to go to the document voice typing. And as you click here, you're going to be directed and play just record rather than typing. Ah, I see some people are there. Bonjour, je m'appelle Joe et j'habite sur l'île de White. Hola, sou Raquel. And as you go on, we have some, of course, some delays. And as I scroll down the document, we can see here. So these used to be done only by typing but I've just realized that it works. <laughs> Looking for my microphone, amazing. <laughs> Remember, you have to first click on the pen oops, so that you can find the phone, the microphone actually in your keyboard. So keep on playing, I'm getting back there soon. And there's something else which is to understand the student's perspective of things. Remember what I told you, remote teaching and limited connection may be uh, advice to follow classes, which is not the ideal world of our dreams. So it is so important to get to understand that. And one of the things that I do which I'm currently doing right now, I'm following this as I'm delivering the webinar. There's a slight delay, but I'm following this so I can get to have your perspective. And this is something that I recommend when you are teaching. Maybe you can get into your Zoom room as with another profile you have like here. And then I place the phone next to the, the, the computer screen and I can follow the student's perspective, the student's experience. So is it too small? Should I play it again? Should I leave it for longer time? It's one idea. It depends, depends on the topic. It really helps me have that perspective of what's going on. You see, uh, we think of like synchronous classes as being 
a very successful live streaming and maybe it is, maybe it's not. It's unpredictable. And having that in mind, uh, that this is something uh, that is beyond our control, there are some factors that we can have into consideration. Enable students to know what to do and definitely have a plan B and plan C that is easy to resource to. So we try and we've been mostly working from home. If you are working with like one-to-one -one classes, it's much easier to navigate through this scenario. But for teachers who have been teaching big groups of students, around 20 or sometimes even more learners, we need to know strategies to keep teaching, to have empathy, and to make sure that somehow, even though, like in my country, there is this digital divide, we are able to go through the process. So I prepared here like a checklist for us. So the empathy and understanding the current context, reaching out to the students and their families. So using a simpler resource. Having a parallel tool besides the video conferencing tool, involving the students and encouraging peer support. It's incredible at any age how much we can accomplish. And the lessons we've been learning in the pandemic, they go beyond actually only how to deliver our classes online. Share your findings so that all the teachers can benefit and learn from your instructions. Be proud of what you have accomplished. One thing I realized in the community, and I think I put myself in a very, um, like I have to be very brave as a non-native speaker to actually write and speak to the community, but I've learned to look at my practice and feel really proud of my learners, of myself, of the effort that we all put together and for the great things we accomplish, despite the difficulties. And of course, live one day at a time. So the adventure of today, maybe there's not, nothing's going to happen tomorrow, <laughs> okay? But we never know, it's unpredictable. So it is also takes us to all the levels of, let's say, navigating through the pandemic. Yeah? Help each other, support each other with all your ideas. Uh, this is definitely the final thing. I have, I'm updating our ongoing communication with the artificial intelligence idea that I suggested in case you want more explanations and, and more guidance on that, okay? And uh, let's take a look at our voice typing. How far along have we gone, okay, in the voice typing? Let's see. Could you share the screen for the, so we can yes. see the voice typing? Is that Sorry, okay? yeah, we Don't have worry. more things right. here. <laughs> we have more things here. Lovely. Oh. There's German, there's Portuguese, there's English, there's French. It's so beautiful. Maybe in the second column, we could type the country. We've been through so many places. That's lovely. And it's beautiful. We, we learned so much. Thank you for that. I'll be sharing with you some further reading. And of course, uh, the presentation. And this message, because every day teaching uh, in the ongoing document, uh, if you go there, I've been updating with everything. And I would like to leave with this message here. We always find a way, and if we exchange ideas and help each other even more. Maybe, I don't know, you're not going to actually write something or go to a video and, and talk about it if this is not what you feel like. But you can share via social media, use hashtags, support 
teachers who have been sharing. And remember, it's so precious when information reaches us in times of need. So this is the way I would like to thank you for your attention here, for being a lovely audience. And I'd like to check questions, if you have questions and... That was absolutely amazing, Raquel. Thank you so much. That was exactly what I had in mind. Um, just, just brilliant. And I think, as people have said, you know, very, well, it feels like a real privilege to have this sort of window into your world and, and, and what you're doing, as you say, in extreme circumstances to connect with the students. And the, when, you, when you said about the students saying, uh, uh, look, teacher, it's possible, that was a very um, moving personal moment, I think, that I think everyone can relate to. So thank you so much for sharing that. I, I really like the voice typing um, as well. Yeah, me all the, too. All yeah. the languages. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, just, just a comment with the second column, you could um, have that column as the place where you give the feedback. So you could have the students uh, mm -hmm. voice typing in the first column in their separate rows. And then for each row, uh, the, the teacher can then give uh, feedback and then the, the student can then change that in real time exactly. uh, as well that's another really nice way of using google docs but i think what i loved about your presentation was um the focus on the simplicity and making things work and Thank and you. just just the simple thing of ch sharing the google doc with us and sharing all the links live um and that sort of the well i think the excitement of seeing like the new link shared a bit like um <laughs> the same thing with uh, in the chat but just having being able to not only having um, uh, a text, but having images and other things that you can share in that way. I think that's been really useful. Exactly. And, and as has been exactly. said in the chat, uh, there are some <laughs> schools whereby the, the only device that children have access to is the mobile yeah, device, which is, you know, Helena said as well. And I think to get some ideas on how uh, we can reach those students' needs, um, exactly. it's been very, very powerful. Uh, I don't you. think there were any questions, but if anyone would like to, to yeah. ask any questions now or uh, it, yeah. As it's still quite a, a, a well, 36 people, if people want to turn on their mics as well and maybe uh, ask, <laughs> ask uh, questions um, using their voice as well. Helen, if that's okay. I think that that'd could be, a nice be cool. Idea. Yeah, sure. Uh, also, you're, you're muted, Helen. You're muted, Helen. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I also, if I could, uh, mm. I'm sharing my profile on Instagram. Just before I started here, the webinar, I talked in the stories, so I talk to my students and to my teacher colleagues here very often. That is, and I also share the work with the students. There are lots and lots of things here. There's a new post coming up uh, about my experience during the pandemic. And one thing that I believe has been uh, very helpful is the fact that, uh, let me see if I can find it here. Maybe I can in the ongoing communication. See how helpful that can be? <laughs> the post about the unstable internet connection, which now comes with a concern with accessibility. I'm so glad that the Cambridge team of World of Better Learning has embraced the idea. Teaching adults with coping with unstable internet connection. Because, you know, there are so many different uh, ways that this can reach out to our community of teachers everywhere in the world. So there's another one coming, coming very soon about the journey since I got to know the schools would be shut and I think people maybe can relate to that. Like Joe, I'm also in social media. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and remember be proud of what you do and especially of the difficulties you're able to overcome. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much. Um, I'm sure, yeah, let's give, let's give uh, Raquel a fantastic round of applause. Oh, and what about oh, a I'm selfie? Sorry. Can we oh, yeah, have a selfie? Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Can we have a selfie? <laughs> of course, so if everyone can turn on their webcams. Okay. Who's going? <laughs> and also, for accessibility, that's how you clap your hands. Oh, really? I didn't know that, okay. Yes, if we think of accessibility, that's how we clap our hands. It's Lovely. universal so, language. Oh, it's so amazing to see when you actually open the camera. So if you feel comfortable with that, I would love to have a selfie. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Okay. That's so, great. Thanks, fantastic. Helen, do you want to, to do the selfies? Is that yes, possible? I'm doing some pictures as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. I know that not everyone can share their screens because at this time of night, some people have got all sorts yeah. of things going on. <laughs> <laughs>
So I'll just do another one. Here we are. And one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think that was just very so good, Raquel. Because thank you, <laughs> thank you all. I'm very thankful. We talk about situations mm -hmm. where there are a lot of people who have deprivation or have problems, but I think for all of us, there'll be somebody who's like that, and it's quite easy. You know, I'm sort of saying to myself, okay, I've got twenty out of thirty who are regularly doing things, but what about those ten who aren't? Mm -hmm. um, and that really did speak to me. I thought there are things I'm doing at the moment through the platforms that others can manage because they've got a device, but just to be able to copy and paste it into a, just a document, which I share rather than making it all fancy. <laughs> Very good. Really good. It's your love, is, your love reading the messages that people have given there because we've been moved by what you've said. It's a real humanity. Thank you. Feel very happy. Lovely. I feel very happy. And I hope to meet you through these walks of our ELT EFL lives. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be amazing. I, I, I'm sure um, uh, some people must have some questions. And maybe if you'd like to, if you'd like to turn on your microphones and ask Raquel about her context and uh, and how, well, you know how 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 you're dealing with the with the with the the pandemic uh, on a sort of on a personal level. And you know because we're hearing these stories now from Brazil of it of it um, of it really yeah, being very difficult now as it is everywhere. But yeah, yeah. but. Um, so we, yeah, if anyone wants Second, to, yeah, in the world, yeah, if anyone wants to ask any questions, statistics we want, we'd like to be. No, that's right, that's right. right. Especially With everyone being very shy. Where I live. <laughs> Helen McFarlane, would you like to ask a question, Helen McFarlane? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Go on, put you on the spot. Go on. I'm sure. I'm sure you've got a question you'd like to ask, oh, uh, Raquel. So questions. I have to apologise. I've just been out for a 12 mile bike ride. I'm feeling very sticky and. I need a shower, so apologies. <laughs> um, I just wanted to, Raquel, that was absolutely amazing. Um, my, you really touched my heart um, because the things that you're doing, I, I'm trying these Google Docs, trying to keep the students involved. Uh, some of them live in very remote areas. Um, I'm just trying to keep them involved and motivated. But the wonderful thing is, that they really motivate each other, which is lovely. And because this is accessible, it's not too complicated in the sense that they are not, um, they're not controlled by fancy technology. Mm -hmm. It Excellent. helps to keep their friendships alive. And because of where we live, mm -hmm. it's, it's actually very remote. And so for, for these students to keep, with, keep in contact with their friends, by using WhatsApp, by using Google Docs, by using voice typing. Thank you, Joe. That was your idea in Cardiff. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> um, you know, it, it comes together and there's something different for everyone, but it keeps their friendships alive. And for me, exactly. that is so important. I now get messages from mum and dad. Thank you so much, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And they're really happy that their student, their children are engaged and they're busy and they help each other. So you've touched so many heartstrings tonight, Raquel. So thank you so much. Thank you. It's so rude to thank you. Oh, thank you, Helen. It's just been amazing. I rushed yes. back on my bicycle to be here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for That's joining so us. Amazing. It's so cool to thank hear that. You. I just I just put uh, Raquel's uh, Twitter handle in the chat. That is right, isn't it? It's, uh, thank you. That's right. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Great, Ribeiro, that's right. Fantastic. Any other, yeah, any other questions that people would like to put to Raquel? Anyone at all? I mean, you really, you put it so clearly. I think all of the examples we could see. I'm still looking for my microphone on this. <laughs> I'm just wondering because, you know, when I don't want the microphone, I always press it by mistake. So, you know, <laughs> it's somewhere there. But I wonder if it's to do with me not having enabled something with Google. Because manage it on there. On the There's a chance. If it's an iOS, maybe you go to, you have yeah. to go uh, to sure the it be done. Now, but it's going to be simple. But it's I'm, really, it's very, I'm very aware. <laughs> fantastic. Especially if you know what you're going to say. I tried it the other day to write a letter to someone. And it was useless. It made me realise that I just don't think about what I'm going to say before I do <laughs> <laughs> lovely yeah there are so many stories and lots of learning thank you so much any any final thoughts uh, raquel 
Yeah, uh, I think uh, like Helen, the colleague who's just spoken here, keep it simple, use less tools. Mm -hmm. It's not about using the latest tools. It depends on the level, the digital literacy of your group, of course. But the first concern is empathy and communication. All the things come along and they feel like embracing more, but there's so much anxiety already. So maybe if you come with parallel things that are really challenging, this might have a reverse uh, effect on motivation. And we don't want that because we want to go, we are all going, we have been going through the pandemic in different levels and we are going to have stories to say, look, we've been through that, we've lived through that and we came out and we changed it and we evolved as people, as professionals and we found other ways and other possibilities. Good things are also coming along. Yeah, and, and that's a perfect that's way to perfect. finish. Good things are definitely coming think, along. And thank you so much, Raquel. I think really. there's a question. Oh, I'm Joe, sorry. A question, so, yeah. Right. Alice, if I mark written. Yeah. So if I might work in a Google Doc, I could. Yes, you could, Alice. Yes, yes you, could. you could. So helpful. <laughs> yeah. I, I use uh, voice dictation on my iPad, so which is just on the keyboard, oh. which is built into the, to the OS all the time for oh. emails and for tweets and things like that. And it's good if you oh, suffer from I, I, um, um, repetitive strain injury as well. Not that I do, but I, occasionally I overdo it. But if you use voice typing, that's an, a, a way of, um, of, of resting your, your wrists, as it were, as well. Uh, so it's another good thing for <laughs> that as well. And your concerns, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Very well. Excellent. I do. Okay, so I think we'll wrap that up there. Thank you so much again, Thank Raquel. You. It's been amazing. It's Thank been really, all. really amazing. Thank you. I feel really privileged so that we've had this opportunity. So thank you. <laughs> thank and you. Um, yeah, I, I hope to meet you face to face at ISF for next year. We'll have to just wait and see. Yeah, what's let's see happen. how it goes. I do hope so too. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank okay. You, thank you both, and thank you, Joe, for finding Raquel as well and introducing <laughs> her. Into <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. I look to following you. Fantastic. That's so great. The recording now, then, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Fantastic. Oh, wow. That was brilliant.